bioengineering. That's how we normally start our tours, but you're seeing all sides of Clemson bioengineering today. All of us, all of our faces and the bosses and the students uh, will introduce ourselves. It'll be myself presenting and then Riley. So we should be the only ones that aren't muted so that y'all can hear what we have to say about bioengineering. And then again, feel free to use that chat feature to ask questions and our boss Janine will kind of jump back and forth as necessary to let us know if y'all are having any trouble um, and anything like that. But like she said, we are recording this session. So if you jump in and say anything that will be on the recording, but we'll introduce ourselves and then we'll jump right into the slides. So my name is Cassidy. You probably got all the emails and the reminders from me. And I spent my four years doing undergrad at Clemson Bioengineering. And then I loved it so much that I decided to stay even longer. So I am doing my master's of engineering also with Clemson biomedical engineering, slight name change, um, but same, same subject matter, same deal. I've been involved in kind of everything under the sun, but a lot of student and guest interactions and just loving bioengineering and of course all the extracurriculars, the dancing, the football, all that good stuff. So Riley, go for it. All right, hi everyone. Um, I'm Riley. I work very closely with Cassidy, um, also as a tour guide for bioengineering. I am a senior in bioengineering. I'm a biomaterials major, so we'll talk or concentrations, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so I'm graduating in May, yay, so exciting. Um, but I'll actually be here for another year to get my Master's of Science in Bioengineering um, through the department. Like Cassidy, I wanted to stay another year because I just love Clemson so much, and, and I'm working on a little project, but we'll kind of talk about the difference between Master's of Science and Master's of Engineering. Um, things that I've been involved in, I did Freshman Council, which is like student government thing. I've worked on a couple different creative inquiry teams, done a couple different um, sort of like internships. I did, studied abroad through Clemson Bioengineering, kind of had my hands on a lot of different things. So we'll get more into that later. Um, once again, I'm from Nashville, so I'm an out-of-state. So is Cassidy. She's from Florida. Oh, I'm from Tampa. I didn't even say that. <laughs> no, that's okay. Um, so we're both out-of-state. So if there's any kind of out-of-state questions or anything, we can um, kind of front those as well. And like Riley mentioned, we both in total, we'll probably have spent five years, maybe even more at Clemson when all is said and done. So any of those student life questions as well, not just bioengineering, we've kind of done it all and seen the housing and all that good stuff. So um, we've gotten weird questions and obscure questions and common questions. So throw anything at us, but we will get started and bear with us again, Zoom presentation. This is the first one we're doing. So we're giving it our best shot, but let's see. Okay, Riley, did it change? You're good. Perfect. Okay. So we will start with just what is bioengineering? We get a lot of questions surrounding this topic because a lot of students and guests come to us asking, is it biomedical engineering? What's bioengineering? How are they different? Um, essentially, they are the same subject matter. So our program actually started with a grad program years ago, and they have the name bioengineering, and we're actually pioneers in the field of biomaterials, which is one of our concentrations we will talk about. But so we have some really great background in this field um, and the pioneering and all of the technology that's come out of Clemson is really cool. When there was a need for an undergrad program, when they saw other schools building their undergraduate programs, they went ahead and developed ours and stuck with our original name, even though other schools were using the term biomedical engineering. So that's kind of why our name differs a little bit, but it's essentially the same subject matter. All of the things that we do are medically based. So if you take a look at this slide, and you see all of those different terms. I won't read it verbatim for you, but feel free to kind of scan through those. We're integrating physical, chemical, engineering principles to develop different devices and materials and implants, all kind of to go toward the medical field. That's a lot to take in though. So we like to boil it down to one statement, which is using engineering skills to create integrated, innovative technology to improve human health. Personally, I think that this is still kind of a mouthful. <laughs> Um, so if you break that down even further, it's really just using those math and science skills to be an engineer. So at the end of the day, you have an engineering degree when you're done with us, um, and you're working to improve human health. So engineering, math, science, improve human health. That's what we like to do. And to kind of further explain this, we will give an example. So we like to talk about the stent because it's a fairly simple concept and the stent is essentially a small metal cage that can expand and collapse. And they put that in an artery that's blocked with plaque. So I know y'all can't see what I'm pointing at, but the yellow that you see in that picture there, um, that's the plaque inside of the artery. So when you have plaque buildup, it's blocking the blood flow that goes through that artery. 
um, and you need all those arteries to be carrying blood throughout the body. So when it gets blocked with plaque, that can cause a whole realm of other problems that you don't want to be dealing with. So they put that metal cage in when it's collapsed and then they expand it so that it pushes that plaque back against the artery walls and allows that blood to flow freely uh, through that artery. So just with that tiny little metal cage, there's a lot of different things that have to be taken into account when it comes to creating it or the actual bioengineering um, creation and application of the stent. So you have to look at the design. So if you're into looking at spatially what it looks like, um, the size, the shape, the surface, you could go in and use a computer-aided design type software like SolidWorks or CAD systems to go in um, and design the actual device itself. You could then go into the mechanical evaluation. So if you're more maybe math oriented, you could use some of those same softwares to look at the forces that that blood is putting on a device like a stent, the forces, the stresses, the strains, things like that. All things that you'll learn in your classes while you're at Clemson, but just another thing that's applied to a small device like that. You can then go into the imaging. So I mentioned biomaterials earlier briefly, but bio electrical is our other concentration in bioengineering. And this is a very electrically based application. So when you are putting that stent in the body, the doctor has to know what he's looking at and where to put it. So imaging is very, very important. And these machines can be developed by bioengineers. So CAT scans, MRIs, things like that. And then, of course, surgical placement. A lot of bioengineering students decide to go on to medical school, and we'll definitely talk more about that. Um, if you are interested in medical school, go ahead and send us that little chat so that we know there are students out there viewing this that want to go to med school, and we'll definitely address some of the things that go into that process. Uh, but that is also part of the stent process. that It's, it's got to go in the body, so we need the doctors to be able to put it there. So all of that goes into just that one little device. And there are so many devices out there. Um, simple, complicated, covers the board. Um, Cassidy, real quick on that slide still. Yes. You want to go back? That picture of the mechanical evaluation for um, kind of everyone who's listening, that is actually a picture pulled from SolidWorks. So what's really awesome about engineering um, at Clemson is that SolidWorks is one of those core classes that we're all going to take. Um, if you're studying engineering. And what's really, really awesome about that is they have you take the CSWA, which is a certification exam at the end of your SolidWorks class. If you pass that, you get a certificate that says that you're a SolidWorks associate. And that's a really awesome thing to put on your resume. Um, I also have used SolidWorks in all of my internships. I actually am using it currently right now in my research. Um, for like staying at Clemson and doing my master's, I'm designing engineering drawings and I learned how to do all of that stuff in SolidWorks, which is one of those core classes um, that they have you take in engineering. I just want to point that out. Cool. Yes, thank you. Also, hi, Karen. <laughs> okay, so some of the careers in bioengineering, um, some of the questions that we get a lot are, what can you do with a bioengineering degree? The answer is endless. Literally, whatever you are interested in, if it is related to kind of the healthcare field at all, you can do it with a bioengineering degree. So we have a lot of people who go into medical device and pharmaceutical industry. So some of those big name companies, Medtronic, Abbott, Dreiger, Gore, within these companies, you can be a quality engineer, you can be a um, research and development engineer, you can be a regulatory. There's a lot of different things that you can do just within the medical device and pharmaceutical industry. Or you can go into hospital and medical centers. So kind of what Cassie was talking about, bioengineering is a really good track to use if you're pre-med, um, just because of like the curriculum lines up and you also have an engineering degree. You have a lot of problem solving skills um, that are really awesome. So we have a lot of people who pursue either becoming a doctor or they can be a technician who works in a hospital and is helping troubleshoot with some of the devices and some of the things that are like in the hospital. You can also go into a government regulatory agency. So medical devices are going to interact with the body. They have to be FDA approved. Um, so you can go and you can work for the FDA and you can kind of be the person that's figuring out what kind of standards these medical devices have to meet so that they're safe and we're not hurting anyone. Um, or you can go and do research for the NIH, um, which is the National Institute of Health. So that's really awesome too. And then the last thing that you can go into with um, a career in bioengineering is university or academia. So you can become a professor, you can go and do research, you can teach the next generation of bioengineers, um, which is really awesome thing to do as well. Working on it. There it goes. 
Okay, so we like to put this kind of like word art um, sort of slide up because it shows where all of our alumni are now. So Clemson does a really good job of keeping those connections with our bioengineers once they graduate. Um, we'll kind of talk about that a little bit later, but we keep in contact with a lot of the people who graduate from Clemson um, with bioengineering and they go to these big name companies. So you see like Medtronic, Johnson & Johnson, BD, Strikers, like huge companies that are like international. There's locations literally everywhere. Um, but we also have a lot of alumni who are places like Polymed or that one up in the looks like your top right corner is GHS, um, which is the Greenville Health System. It's actually called Prisma now. Um, but those are like in Anderson or in Greenville. So it's more like 20 to 30 to 40 minutes away from the Clemson area. So basically this slide is kind of just saying like you can go literally wherever um, with Clemson Bioengineering, whether that is staying around the Clemson area or going up to New York City um, or going out to California. I also like kind of talking about this slide because I like to mention the idea of a Clemson family. Um, I'm sure some people have, may have heard of the Clemson family. It's just like this feeling of people like looking out for you and always going out of their way to help you out. Um, I had a personal experience with that. So last summer I was applying for a whole bunch of internships. I was doing it online. So I was like submitting my resume to the black void of internet. <laughs> whatever that you just put in your resume, you know, and it just goes out. I don't know who looks at it, the computer, replies, who knows. Um, and I got an email back from someone and it was an engineer at a company and he was like, hey, I see you go to Clemson and I see you have a good GPA. I did my PhD at Clemson. Would you have time to have a phone call conversation? And I was like, uh, heck yeah, I have time for a phone call conversation. <laughs> um, he called me later that day. He worked for BD, which is Becton Dickinson Company. They're up in New Jersey, so about 30 minutes outside of New York City. We had a phone call conversation. We talked a little bit about engineering. We talked a lot about football. We talked a lot about how fun Clemson is, how beautiful it is. Um, we got along super well, and I actually ended up going and doing that internship this past summer. It was a lot of fun. I worked with him. Um, his advisor for his PhD is a professor that I currently have, and so we like got to bond over like how nice like Dr. Simonescu is, and it was just... Um, really awesome that I got an opportunity like that just because I had Clemson on my resume and he knew the rigor of the Clemson bioengineering program and that just moved me to the top of the list for an internship. So it was a really awesome opportunity that is definitely had to do with our alumni. This is just a general outlook for bioengineering as a career. So we think that this caters more toward parents and guests of our students, um, but our employment growth uh, is 23% projected from 2014 to 2024, and the national average is 11% for all other fields. Um, so basically, job security, which is super nice. <laughs> um, and then if you look at the bottom half of the slide, the average starting salary offers for the Bachelor of Science level is 60,000, and then the median BioE salary, which is all degree, all experience levels, um, is that almost six-figure number. So very good numbers to see. Um, very good numbers to kind of hope for as we graduate and start doing our job searches, um, which is, for us, it's good for when you think about it on the other side, uh, there are always going to be human health problems to solve, which is a little bit sad, but at the same time, if we can help make that difference um, and also have these great jobs at the same time, that's awesome. So some of our national statistics, so we like to say that these are actually bioengineering national statistics, but they're very closely related um, to Clemson ones. We have about 35% of people who graduate with bioengineering degree go to graduate school. So whether that be a master's or a PhD, either at Clemson or somewhere else, um, or they can go to law school. We have a lot of people who actually do like pre-law or patent law um, with bioengineering, which is really awesome. Or a lot of people can go into business school, so they actually go and get their MBA. Um, which is really cool because then they could be like a manager or something like that. We section out medical school, which is about 20%, just because bioengineering is a really good undergrad for medical school. Um, once again, the course curriculum lines up very well and you kind of learn those problem solving skills. So we section that out um, and that's about 20% of the undergrads in BioE. And then the remaining 40% are going to go directly into employment with an undergrad um, in bioengineering and that can be industry, consulting, hospital, government, so that can be your regulatory or your research and development engineering, your quality engineering, um, any of those kinds of jobs. Uh, so we have two combined bachelor's and master's programs. 
So the one over on the left side is the Masters of Science. And if you were on at the very beginning, when we introduced ourselves, this is the one that Riley's doing. So she'll get to talk about this a little bit as well. Um, it's more research driven and focused on maybe staying in school for a little bit longer, maybe going to get your PhD, uh, but it's 30 credits and you are doing a thesis with that. So you're writing that big long thesis paper that you have to defend. Over on the right side of your slide, you can see the Masters of Engineering program, which is the program I'm currently in. So that one is very design driven. So I'm not doing research in a lab and then writing a thesis paper. I'm taking the full year to work on a medical device and trying to get it as close to marketable as possible. We'll talk about our senior design program later in our slide deck, but it's similar to the senior design program, but just amped up a level. Um, you're gonna do more development on your device, more testing prototypes and things like that. And it's definitely preparing you more for an industry job. So I was never one to like lab research. I was more industry driven, wanted to get out into industry, working with people, working in a company. Uh, so that was the track I chose. And that one is also 30 credits. It no longer requires an internship, but it used to. So if you are familiar with Clemson BioE and you've heard that, it doesn't require that anymore. Uh, the way these programs work is that when you are in your undergrad, when you are ready and have satisfied the prerequisites for these classes that are offered at the grad level, you can take them as technical electives. So technical electives, which will show up again later in our slides, um, they are more specific to your interests. So maybe you're interested in cardiovascular engineering or biofabrication or some of these other topics that we get to study. You can take those if they're offered at the grad level and then you've knocked out a few of those credits. So instead of doing two semesters of 15 and 15 credit hours, you can do maybe 12 and 12. Something that's a little more manageable or that gives you more opportunities to add in research or an assistantship where you can work, something to that effect. Um, and that also allows you to finish in just one extra year. We get the question a lot, if you are locked in to finishing that master's with these programs, meaning, if you choose to pursue the master's, a five-year program, one of these tracks, and you do not want to finish your master's, do you then not graduate at all with a bachelor's? No, you graduate twice with these programs. So I have already graduated. I have my degree. It's in my apartment, I promise. <laughs> um, so if I decided that I did not like the master's program and wanted to drop out right now or halfway through, something like that, I would still have my bachelor's degree and be just fine. Um, so it's, it doesn't lock you in, or if you get a job offer, or you get into medical school and you didn't think you would, or you know some other type of scenario, you're not locked in, you can still graduate bachelor's and then add the master's onto it um, with that extra year. Another way that this works, if you stay at Clemson for one of these five-year programs, you don't have to take the GRE if you have a 3.4 undergrad GPA, so that's what's listed on the bottom there. So less, less tests to study for, which is really cool. And you also know your faculty and your staff and your department at that point. And it felt like home to me, so I wanted to stay a little bit longer. Um, but as long as you have that GPA, it can be as simple as talking to your advisor, like Janine Putman on the line, and um, organizing a form and then signing the form that these are the classes I'd like to take at the grad level when I'm an undergrad and sending it off to grad school, that office to get approved. So it's a really cool way to get your master's and kind of a great program to be involved in because it is just that one extra year, unless you have some extra research or something that needs to be finished, but it's designed to be just one extra year, which is awesome. And then Riley, if you wanna talk about your experience with master's of science. Yeah, so I am planning to stay and do the master's of science. So I actually will get to write the super long thesis paper <laughs> and defend and have my whole committee. Um, I like research and I want to specifically get into an early like research and development sort of job. Um, I started in my master's or like decided to stay for my master's a little bit late. I was approached by a professor that I knew at actually the beginning of this semester and the end of last semester. I had already kind of signed the form and like had plans to stay at Clemson, but nothing was set. I just had myself set up um, in case I like, wanted to stay or if I couldn't find a job or something like that. I just kind of <laughs> had the option available. Um, and I was approached by this professor and he said that he had a project that he was looking for a student to work on. Um, and he was actually creating a diagnostic device. And so a lot of the research esh things were kind of already done. It was actually just like the fabricating into an actual device and then being able to do clinical trials um, this next year, which is really awesome. So I actually decided to stay for that. Um, and I have loved it so far. I've been, as I said earlier, I've been doing a lot of engineering drawings for like the prototype that I'm actually making. I'm working with the machine shop at Clemson. 
um, they're gonna like help make a prototype for me and I'm gonna make sure that it works and then I'm gonna go work um, with the some patients at the Greenville Health um, System or I guess at Prisma now um, in Greenville and I'm gonna do clinical trials and then kind of write up the data on that so it's definitely a paper side but it's also kind of industry because I'm kind of doing some of the clinical trial stuff so it's a little bit of a merge between the two um, but I'm really excited about it so it's an awesome opportunity. And for those that aren't familiar with the term clinical trial, <laughs> that's, oh, um, <laughs> no, you're good. We're just so used to some of this language by now. Um, clinical trials are what happens when you have a device that has been tested in the lab enough that you feel it's safe, and then you talk to the FDA um, and some of these organizations to get approval and to write up these papers to say, we would like to do testing in a hospital, in the real setting. Um, so that's essentially what Riley means, that her device and what she's working on is far enough along that they are now ready to test it in the real setting, which is really important and really, really cool. So that's what that means. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so a little bit more about bioengineering um, at Clemson. So if we were in person, we would be walking you through and being sitting in the Rhodes Engineering Research Center, which is where majority of your undergraduate classes are going to be um, in bioengineering. It's also where our teaching laboratories are gonna be and Cassidy will kind of talk more specifics in a little bit, but that's like the main um, building. Usually when I'm walking people through, I like to say that we're in a really good spot. So right in the middle of the campus, we're right next to the library. We're also right next to Chick-fil-A. There's a Starbucks, <laughs> so nice. I eat a lot more Chick-fil-A than I already <laughs> But it's so good, so it's fine. Um, that's where Rhodes is. It's a really great building, it's beautiful. It's very clean, it's awesome. Some other facilities though that we have at Clemson for bioengineering um, undergraduates to use are the Biosystems Research Complex. So this building is across from Hendrix. Um, you're not gonna have any specific classes designated in that complex. It's gonna be more so if you're really interested in like a specific type of drug delivery research or you're working with a professor whose office is over there and maybe has some other labs um, over there that you can go and work in, that's what you would be doing in the Biosystems Research Complex. Very cool building, has a lot of really fun technology that you get to use as a bioengineer at Clemson. Um, but you're not gonna be like forced to go all the way over there, it's really not that far, but like forced to go all the way over there um, for like a class or something. Um, we also have MUSC, which is the Medical University of South Carolina Clinical Research Facility, which is in Charleston. So Charleston is like four hours from here, right? About, yeah. okay. Um, and so it's really cool because we work um, actually with some clinical people at the research facility in Charleston, and we'll kind of talk about that with senior design um, in a little bit, but you can partner with clinicians over there too, so it's awesome because we're kind of bridging across the state. Um, so we also have that facility, and we'll talk about in a little bit, there's a defined program that's offered sometimes over the summer where you can go and get clinical hours um, over there too. So the last one that we have is QBINC, which is the Clemson University Biomedical Engineering Innovation Campus, which is weird word be, which is why we call it QBINC. Um, this one is in Greenville, so that one is like the one's about 45 minutes away. Um, it's really awesome. Sometimes people refer to it as like Pate Wood sort of campus, beautiful labs, um, really great place that you can also do research if you want to. Once again, you're not going to be like forced to go out there for like a class or something like that, but say you're working with a professor who might have a lab out there, or might, he might be running a study out there. Um, it's really awesome because we have that building and then we also, some of the floors are rented out to startups. Um, so I actually had a friend who did an internship at the Cube Inc. like last summer, two summers ago with a startup company just because he had made a connection through a professor and he's actually working for that startup company now after he has graduated. Um, so it's a really cool like way to kind of get involved with maybe startup companies that are local if you want to stay in Greenville um, or just kind of go over there and see what kind of research is going on. They have a cadaver lab, which is kind of cool and interesting. I mean, I, I've never gone over there, but it's a big cadaver lab. But it's really cool. Um, yeah. Awesome. Um, so a little bit more specifics about bioengineering at Clemson and our main building. Uh, we have Rhodes Engineering Research Hall. Just we affectionately call it just Rhodes for short. Um, but part of it was built for the graduate students, and I believe that that's five floors. Correct, Riley? Five floors. We have a total of five. Yes. Cool. Um, and then Rhodes Annex is for mainly undergrads. So Rhodes Annex was built in 2009, um, and if you were here at the very beginning, I mentioned how our undergrad program was developed later when we saw the need for it kind of across the board with different universities expanding and having biomedical engineering crop up. 
So Rhodes Annex has our undergraduate training and research facilities, and that's three floors. So we have some state-of-the-art teaching laboratories, and they're really clean. Um, we try to keep them as organized as possible, and we have things for senior design, for bioinstrumentation. We have a tissue engineering lab, actually multiple of those. Uh, so there's some really great facilities for us to use and kind of spend our day-to-day -day life in. And then some general statistics. We have 25 full-time faculty. They all have their PhDs. And those are the professors that are teaching your classes. One of the questions that we get often as well is who actually teaches the classes. Do we have teaching assistants and grad students teaching a bunch of the different classes for undergrads? Or is it actual professors, PhD level? The professors with the PhDs teach the lecture portion. And then sometimes they will drop into the lab sections to help out the grad students and the TAs that cover the labs. But the lecture portion and most of the material is done by the actual professor um, that is PhD level. We also have two professional undergraduate advisors. So one of them is Ms. Janine Putman, who is on the line. She's waving in her little box over there. Um, and then we also have a career advisor, Jennifer Hogan. Her job for us is to find us those connections to our Clemson family that Riley mentioned earlier in that big word cloud, all of those companies, she stays in touch with our students who have graduated and moved on to company jobs and research positions so that she can find us those connections so that we can get jobs, co-ops, and internships. We have a wonderful career center on Clemson's campus that everyone can use, but specifically for bioengineering, we have an advisor who manages just bioengineering, which is a great resource for us for sure. Uh, we have about 360 undergraduate students. It fluctuates, but that's kind of right around where it sits, and then 110 graduate students. And we like to show those numbers because it's about a three-to-one ratio, and that's really great for mentoring. So grad students like myself and then Riley in just a few months here could become mentors to undergrads. I actually mentor some of the senior design teams now. It's great because they can ask us questions about how did you do this when you were going through the program, or I'm having trouble interpreting these instructions or something to that effect. And we can really share how we did it and what our experience was and just help them through that process. So that's a great thing as well. And then as Ms. Putman told me to mention, as people kind of jump in and out, this session is being recorded. So just keep that in mind as you're viewing us today. So Cassie, just to mention one other thing, yes. the, the two buildings we actually have are connected. So you don't have to go to separate buildings. You don't have a separate yes. building for grad and undergrad. Um, they you wouldn't even notice uh, other than, you know, just a few changes that the buildings um, were not initially connected um, and that they added on. So I did want to just mention that. No, that was good. Thank you. I'm not, sometimes we're not used to these little details because on our normal tour day, y'all, we walk you through the building and we point out where the buildings kind of connect together and were added on. So thank you. We don't think about those things. So some, um, more details about the actual bioengineering program at Clemson. So once you decide to do bioengineering um, at Clemson, you'll actually choose a concentration area. So we have two different concentration areas. The first one is biomaterials. Both Cassidy and I, well, Cassidy was biomaterials. I am currently <laughs> um, biomaterials. The majority of the undergrads at Clemson are, or the bioengineering undergrads at Clemson are biomaterials. Um, but we also have bioelectrical. So kind of the difference between the two, or like kind of how I like to explain the difference between the two, Biomaterials, some of those big words are going to be nanomaterials, tissue engineering, material science, material interface. So essentially what biomaterials is, is looking at how a medical device or a material is going to interact with the body once it's been implanted. Um, you're going to be doing a couple more material science classes. So you'll be looking at like polymers and how you fabricate and actually create materials. Um, bioelectrical, on the other hand, is some of those like trigger words are going to be like pacemakers, electrodes, instrumentation. I kind of just like to say if it has a battery supply or it's like hooked up some sort of electricity going through it, that's going to be your bioelectrical side um, of bioengineering. And that's going to be a lot of those like imaging techniques, um, a lot of like the bigger sort of medical device imaging kind of technology um, are things that you'd be working on. So if Cassie goes yep. to the next slide. So this is the curriculum for biomaterials. So if y'all want to take a picture of this or like a screenshot also, I think we're going to send these out um, so that you'll have them. But if you look at it, everything that's in purple on these, slide, on these slides are going to be things that the biomaterials and the bioelectrical concentrations are going to take the exact same. So if you look at that freshman year, it's all purple. 
everyone's taking the exact same classes. Sophomore year for biomaterials, it's all purple, um, taking all those same classes. Junior year is kind of where it splits out um, for biomaterials at least, and you can kind of see some of those course codes are like MSC, so that stands for material science. So like I was saying, biomaterials is gonna be a little bit more focused on that material side, um, kind of like polymer science, materials processing, stuff like that, that's a little bit more specific to the material interface of a medical device. The next one, I'll let her look, yeah. So this is the bioelectrical curriculum. So once again, everything that's in purple is gonna be the ones that are the same between the two different um, concentrations and the ones that are in orange are gonna be where they differ. So for this, um, for bioelectrical, you break out a little bit earlier and that's gonna be your sophomore year. And that's just because you're gonna take a circuits class. Um, which is like that ECE, which stands for electrical and like computer engineering. So a little bit more of that electrical instrumentation sort of side um, where you'll just get a little bit more sort of heavier kind of feedback, I guess, um, into that electrical kind of side. But that being said, Clemson Bioengineering Curriculum in general does an amazing job at preparing you for success with bioelectrical or biomaterials. So like as biomaterial major, I'm still taking like bioinstrumentation. So like I still am familiar with a lot of electrical techniques that I need to be familiar with to be successful in my career. So like kind of an example of that is this past summer when I was doing my internship, I was helping another intern actually create like a circuit. And the reason that I could do that, even though I was biomaterials major, was because Clemson does a really good job of making sure that you are successful and you know all of the techniques for biomaterials and bioelectrical. It's just whichever one you're more interested in, whichever one you want to, to really like delve and dive into. A um, couple more things about the curriculum. If you look at the bottom of the senior year, it says three technical electives. So these classes are kind of the sort of, kind of the classes where you get to be selective on what you're really interested in. Um, you get to pick between classes like drug delivery, biofabrication, um, cardiovascular engineering, orthopedic engineering, bioimaging, um, photonics, which is like a bioinstrumentation sort of course. There's a lot of courses like that that are offered that you get to pick based on what your interests are. So I took a biofabrication class um, that was really cool and I'm currently in cardiovascular engineering just because I'm really interested in the cardiovascular system so those are my technical electives that I got to pick. There's a total of 12 credit hours of technical electives. Up to six of those can be from a research-based sort of background so like they don't have to technically be a lecture-based class where you're like sitting in an actual class. Six of those credit hours can come from research or a creative inquiry team that you're working on or in my case I did a study abroad where I was signed up for research classes where I got six of those credit hours. So at least six have to come from a lecture-based class so that's like two different classes so for me I took biofabrication and cardiovascular engineering and those are lecture-based classes where I'm like really like learning the material and I'm in class listening to a professor but up to six of them can come from research if that's something that you're interested in. You can take all 12 credit hours or all four of the technical electives as lecture-based classes if that's what you want to do um, as well. And then there is the biomedical design one and two that's in your senior year and that's senior design which Cassie will talk about in a bit but that's really awesome because it's kind of set up to be in your senior year so that you can bring the bioelectrical and the biomaterials concentration back together where you'll like see, you see that they're in purple so like your classes that both of us concentrations have to take and so you can form teams that are have biomaterial and bioelectrical so that you can be like a super powerful like all-encompassing kind of team. And here we are at senior design. <laughs> uh, so that's what Riley was just going over kind of briefly but I'll talk about it a little bit more in depth and she might jump back and forth. Riley's in senior design right now and I did the full year of it last year um, and this relates to my master's program because like I mentioned earlier if you were on uh, the video with us. My master's program is essentially this process I'm about to talk about, but just amped up a level. So the first semester of senior design, and for bioengineering at Clemson, senior design is a full year. So even some of the engineering disciplines at Clemson will only maybe have one semester of senior design or a capstone project, if you're familiar with that term. It's just kind of based on the department's preference and what their program involves. Ours chooses to make it a full year. So in our first semester, we are forming our teams, and you can, for the most part, choose your team. 
but choose wisely. Um, and they're teaching us how to observe a clinical need. So observing a need in a hospital and a medical setting and really just learning how to look at a need versus a problem versus a solution. So a lot of people jump very quickly to something is wrong here. I want to solve it by doing this. Sometimes that creates an issue because you really haven't taken the time to analyze what problem you are looking at and then what you need from that problem. Um, and not necessarily jumping straight to this is how we're going to solve it. It's just I need a device that does this. Not how to make that device just yet, but I need a device that does this. Or I need a solution to this problem. Um, so we look at how to break that down and really analyze what we're looking at so that we can better create those solutions when we get to that part. Uh, so we're learning about the design process of medical devices from just an idea to putting a product on the market. So we learn um, how to research patents and look at what's already out there. So what can we not create because it already exists? Or how can those patents and those um, designs that exist influence what we're working on now? And then what is intellectual property? So knowing that you can't necessarily share everything about the device you're creating whenever you want to anyone because it's an idea that maybe you created and you don't want someone to steal it. So you might not want to share that because that's your intellectual property. Um, we learn about all of those kinds of ideas in the first semester of senior design and how the FDA works and all of these different standards. And then we get to second semester and that really goes into prototyping and creating your actual device. So at the very beginning, you're given in that first semester, even you're given an Excel spreadsheet and a topic to consider. So for example, my group was pediatric cardiology. That's what we were assigned. So we would look in this big giant spreadsheet and we picked out five problems that are witnessed in hospitals and medical settings today related to that topic. And we did some research on those five and you narrow it down to just one thing that you might want to solve. And then your team works on solving and researching the patents and things for that problem the entire year. Um, so when you get to second semester, you've nailed down which one problem you're trying to solve and you're looking at executing that design process that you learned about. So you're prototyping, even at first, just sketches on a piece of paper, and then maybe you're creating something out of pipe cleaners and popsicle sticks and Play-Doh. Um, that's how the design process starts. And then you take that very simple prototype and maybe you make it out of things that you find at Lowe's or Home Depot, you know, pipes and wood and things like that. Just bring, bring that prototype up a level. And then by the end of that semester, hopefully you've been able to contact real manufacturers and get an actual prototype done that could be something that you might see in a hospital someday or as close as you can get it. Um, and along that prototype development process, you're doing testing on that prototype to see how strong it is. And if you're going to tell someone that it's, it can hold this much weight, then it, you know, you want to make sure that it can hold that weight. So you've got to test it in different ways um, to verify and validate that it does the things that you want it to. And you'll have bi-weekly meetings with clinicians, industry experts, business leaders, um, faculty members. So every about two weeks, the seniors will have meetings with um, their professor and any graduate students or TAs that are kind of assigned to their team and even industry professionals out in companies, as well as a doctor, maybe from the Greenville Health System slash Prisma now, formerly known as Greenville Health System, or like Riley mentioned earlier, the Medical University of South Carolina. We are assigned an actual clinician or doctor to partner with us and give us feedback. So all of these people might be tuning in to these meetings every two weeks where you're presenting your progress for those past two weeks, what you've been working on and you're given documentation that needs to be done and submitted. Um, so you have a chance to really talk to these people, get their feedback from both the engineering design standpoint, but also the hospital standpoint. We're really trying to bridge that gap in communication where an engineer might be working on something that the doctor can't actually use because it wasn't what they wanted in the first place or maybe the doctor says I need this device and an engineer knows it's not possible. We're really trying to bridge that gap by pulling all of these people together in the same place and working for a full year on creating one of these um, really cool medical devices that could end up in a hospital someday. It's possible that you could get a patent out of something like this or that the device could get patented further down the line when it gets um, you know pushed up toward the master's level, um, you could end up even creating your own company out of it. So one of the pictures that's on this slide is the Tarian Orthotics logo that I'm kind of circling with the mouse. 
that was a company or a business that was started by a team of all women and it was a shoulder brace for hockey players. It was their senior design project and they decided to take that all the way and turn it into their business. So they ended up partnering with the NHL um, and creating that hockey brace for real hockey players out there. So, and that's even bioengineering. It doesn't have to go to the hospital. It can be something as simple as a shoulder brace. Riley, do you have any extra? No, that was really good. Um, I guess the only other thing I would say um, is kind of talking about like how helpful it is to have the whole senior design process in general when you're trying to apply for jobs and when you're like looking even at internships and stuff. One of the questions that at least I've been asked a lot in job interviews and even internship interviews is if I'm familiar with the design history file, which is what you put together during senior design. Um, it's essentially just like the blueprint of your medical device from conception all the way through how you would get it approved, how you would submit to the FDA, all of these things, all the documentation. A little bit daunting to look at because it's huge, um, but it's really awesome because you have this huge thing that you worked on that you know every single part that goes into designing a medical device and like you've essentially done all of this stuff in an in industry related sort of way. So like when you're applying, <clears throat> when you're applying to these jobs you can essentially say hey hire me because you don't have to train me for a whole year on how to interface with these documents or how to come up with this design flow or what verification testing or validation testing and like all of these things that senior design teaches you hey you don't have to train me i already know how to do that so like you are just that much better of a candidate for the job because essentially they don't have to train you for a whole year's worth of work because you've already done it um, it's really amazing. People take that very seriously, especially if you're going straight into industry. I have mentioned that in my interviews for places and they're like, wow, that's awesome that Clemson has you do that because like this essentially is a lot of work that we don't have to now teach you and we trust you to do. Um, so it's really awesome that you're familiar with stuff like that. For sure. Um, one of the other things that we do with senior designer related to it, we will sometimes take these projects if they look like they're promising and we will submit them these big documents to competitions. So if you sort of scan through this slide, you can see some of the teams and the schools that Clemson design teams are going up against in these competitions. Really, really big name schools that are well known for engineering and technology um, and all of those other things STEM related. And we're winning these competitions and we're winning prize money as well. So you could get paid for doing your homework is essentially <laughs> the idea. Um, but this is really important as well because we are probably not one of the giant names in engineering, but we can definitely compete with the giant names. Um, and we're creating things that are going to be viable potentially for putting on the market as well as possibly life-changing because of the work that we're doing and that it's bioengineering and it's all for human health. Um, and then of course, Terry and Orthotics is also still listed on the bottom of this slide. So that's the company I talked about before that was hockey uh, shoulder braces. Kind of going in a different direction um, than just standard class, what are some of the things that you can do that is our experiential learning that's not necessarily class-based? There's so many different internships and co-ops available for Clemson Bioengineering students. So I myself, my background, I did a five month co-op with Johnson & Johnson, um, their Janssen Pharmaceuticals Division, with what, which was located in Athens, Georgia. Um, that was fall of my junior year, technically. I took a semester off of school um, and I just went and worked. And for me, I started off doing a rotational program. So I went through the Michelin Career Center, which is an awesome opportunity. Um, that's available with Clemson's campus. You go over a lot of engineering people do it. It is not required, literally at all. You are not forced to do it. You don't, it's not like if you don't do it, it's not that you like don't have the credit to graduate. It's just your, it's on you. Like if you want to do it, you can do it. The option, the opportunity is there. Um, so I went over, went through that interview process. It was really awesome because a lot of those companies already partnered with Clemson. So it was very easy for me to get in contact with a company like Johnson & Johnson, sit down, have an interview with them and be able to potentially get um, a rotational co-op experience. So kind of back to how the rotational co-op works, you take a semester off of school. So say I started in the fall, I would go and work. I would come back and take classes in the spring. I would go back to work the following summer. I would go back to school the following fall. 
and then go back to work the following spring. So it's three rotations of working where you're alternating between work and classes. So you're still a student. Um, those semesters that you are working and you're like, you're still a student, but you're not technically a student, you're not paying for classes. So there's like a co-op fee. I don't actually know how much it is. I'm not gonna, the numbers don't really know. Um, but it's like, you're not paying for like credits or anything. You're just paying to be an active student still. It's a small fee, um, but you're not like, paying the fee for um, an actual semester. You're getting to work, you're getting that experience, um, and that's the rotational program. When I started off on my rotational program, I did my first semester and it wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. It was more of a manufacturing sort of position and I realized that I want to do more of a research and development, so I talked to my advisors and I didn't finish through with the three rotation kind of program, most people do and they absolutely love it and they have an entire year of co-op experience by the time they graduate. A lot of times those people go and work for those companies um, afterwards just because they've kind of built that connection, they've built that background with that company and they're very familiar with it and they love it. Um, so it's a very easy transition to getting a job at that company doing the rotational program. For me, I knew that it was not what I wanted so I just did the one rotation, got the experience, it was really great. Definitely learned like what I do want and what I don't want. Um, we also partner with another big company where you can actually take an entire year off of school and you can do like a year long co-op um, sort of rotation and then you come back to school after that. Sometimes people will do that like after their junior year. Um, really great experience because you are getting an entire year of industry experience. Um, yeah, so that's also an opportunity that you can do or you can go outside of the career center. You can talk to Jennifer Hogan. You can just find things on your own and find like a six month one. And as long as you're being communicative with your advisors and you're kind of working through that, then it's very, very easy to keep up with like your co-op and making sure that your classes are all set and you're still on track to graduate or like what that looks like. An internship on the other hand is gonna be a shorter duration of a program. Usually those are over the summer. Um, another really good way to get those is through Jennifer Hogan because she has that connection with all the alumni. So it's really awesome because like, the opportunity to find an internship in bioengineering very easy because of Jennifer Hogan or you can do what I did just like submit to things online um, people get them that way too that's how I did mine internships are great once again they're not required I wasn't signed up for class or anything it just it was just an internship that I did um, and those don't have to be in South Carolina if you don't want them to be they can be anywhere else or they can be local the opportunity is it's pretty endless um, another thing that you can do is mentored research or senior honors. So there's the General Honors College at Clemson, which is like general honors that you can do. And I was part of that. So if anyone has any questions once we're done about just like general honors, I can answer those. Um, but there's something that's like departmental honors, which is like senior honors, which is specific to bioengineering. Um, you have like a little mini project. You'll have like a little, a little thesis that you'll do and you'll defend at the end of your senior year. You'll have your own project that you're working on. Um, and it's kind of just like working on research with an advisor or professor. You can start that whenever you want. Typically, it's like your junior, senior year that you're working on it. Um, my roommate did it and she absolutely loved it. And she's like presenting at the end of the semester and she had a really great experience and it really introduced her to the type of research that she wants to do. And now she's going to grad school um, for that specific type of research. And it looks really good for people who are very interested in going to grad school because you've kind of done like a little mini thesis. So if you don't want to stay in like your master's or you don't want to do your master's, but you know you're interested in a PhD, doing something like your senior honors looks really good because it shows that you can do independent research. You can also get class credit or credit hours for those. So like I was talking about earlier, six credit hours can come from research. Um, that senior honors sort of stuff, you can kind of get some credit hours, tech elective sort of hours for that as well. The last thing we have on there is a team-based research projects. So these are creative inquiries. Um, we like to call creative inquiry like little bite-sized research projects, but they don't have to be research projects. They can be like any kind of project that you want. So if you go to like the Clemson, just like creative inquiry page in general online, you can see a list of all the different creative inquiries that there are. Um, there's a lot of BioE specific ones and a lot of times that's what bioengineers will get involved in. So for me, I worked on creating a material that like attracted cancer cells back into it and would like cut them off from blood supply so that it would like minimize like cancer in the body with just like free floating cancer cells. I worked on that as creative inquiry team. Cassie can talk about in a second what she did for her creative inquiry, which was very different than mine. Um, but there's also like 
concrete canoe or like a lot of, I don't know, there's like so many different <laughs> ones. Like there's like robotic ones where you can design like helmets that like take your brain waves and like translate them into things that are moving. There's so many different things that you can do for creative and create, whether that's bio related or just something fun that you like want to be involved in. Um, and those can also be credit hours, especially if you do a bio -E one, um, you can keep, you can use that as a technical elective as well. Really that's quickly me. before, yeah, I was going to say before I let Riley talk about study abroad, um, my creative inquiry was called Archer. And essentially what we did, since I'm, again, very not research oriented, um, I like the more industrial things and the company related industry stuff. I was working with a team to create archery equipment for students with disabilities in the surrounding school systems around Clemson. So we got to go into these schools. It was probably middle school and high school level mostly, but also elementary. And we would get to meet the students and some of them had just physical handicaps and some of them were mentally disabled and we just got to get to know these students and they were all so awesome and take, you know, measurements of, you know, arm length and things like that for whatever device we were creating for them to be able to use this adaptive archery equipment. I don't know if this is just a South Carolina thing. It wasn't in Florida when I was growing up, but archery is part of their PE curriculum, um, which to me is kind of a wild concept. <laughs> but uh, These students a lot of times can't do this unit of PE. They just have to sit out and watch their friends learn how to shoot a bow and arrow and hit the target and get all excited and things like that. So our goal was to create adaptive equipment that all of these students could use and then it could be left at the schools. So maybe a stand that holds the bow in case the student has like hand tremors or something like that and they might shake or if they're wheelchair bound, the stand can is telescoping. So it goes up and goes down and you can lock it in place. And some of the things we worked on were even like hand finger trigger systems for hand deformities so that a student uh, that couldn't really hold the bow or pull the bowstring back could just press a button and it would shoot, those kinds of things. And it was a really cool project to be involved with because one of the students that we got to know shot for the first time and I was there to see it and he turned around after he hit the target and was like I didn't think I'd ever be able to do that ever and so those are the really cool moments and the really important experiences that we can make in our field so Riley go to town <laughs> Okay, so like one of the last things we like to talk about is the opportunity to study abroad um, my first thing that I kind of like to say about studying abroad is a little like pitch for me do it if you can. Um, it was really awesome. I got to go abroad and it was my first and only time out of the country. Um, it was really awesome. I got to go to Singapore um, and that was a summer program. All of our study abroads that we currently have right now are summer programs. And so if you're looking at this list, the Pamplona one is lecture based. So over the summer, you will go to Pamplona, you'll take a bioethics class, which counts as a technical elective. And then you'll take one other class while you're over there, whether that be like a Spanish or some sort of like gen ed or something that's offered. Um, so take two different classes, they are lecture based. So you'll be going to class and learning the material. Um, so that's really awesome. The other study abroad programs are Singapore and then Tokyo and Osaka. It's not Bangkok anymore. Um, yeah, it's okay, no, it's, so it's Osaka. Those three different places are research-based study abroad. And so the way that that works is, is you'll go over and you'll work on a research team. Um, for me, I worked under a PhD student who was working on a new material for stent design. So Cassie talked about stents earlier. His project or his PhD was a different material, different polymer that he was fabricating to be used in a stent design. So I went over to Singapore for the whole summer. Um, it was about nine, eight weeks maybe that I was over there, maybe nine weeks. Um, and I would go into the university every single day, but I was working in a lab. Um, and I was helping him fabricate the polymer and I was helping him do testing on it. And so it was really awesome. I got six credit hours um, for that and that those counted as like my technical elective. We, um, and I think that we're putting that on there or Janine maybe just said that, but we're working on building some ones for the fall and the spring. I know that they're thinking about moving the Singapore one, I think at least to like a fall sort of thing. So people are over there for longer. Um, I liked the summer opportunity. It was really awesome for me to just kind of be over there for a while and get to experience it and come back and also get um, some research hours. The other thing that we have on the study abroad is creative inquiry. And so you can actually, oh, you're good. So you can actually go abroad through creative inquiry. So the two places that you can go with um, 
SDI it, or creative inquiry in bioengineering is Tanzania and Mexico. So these creative inquiry teams are designing medical devices for developing worlds. Um, so a lot of times we are designing medical devices with senior design and we take for granted that we are in America and we have a lot of access to things that we just think are like normal things that we, you know, have access to. Whereas in developing worlds, they might not, you know, be able to like plug something into a wall to charge it, or they might not have the money or the infrastructure to support some of the medical devices that we're designing over here. And so these creative inquiry teams get to go over. Um, I know Tanzania, you can go for a short summer or a long summer. So my roommate went for like six weeks last summer um, to Tanzania and she got to work with clinicians over there and kind of talk to them and like see what some of their pain points were and see like what kind of medical devices she could design that would be applicable in Tanzania. Um, and so, yeah, it was really cool for her to go abroad and to be able to like work on something. She's working on a breast pump that filters out HIV. Um, so it's really cool, really applicable. Um, and it was really satisfying and like rewarding for her to be able to say that she's helping work on something that can be applied to maybe not just like the United States. Um, it can be applied all over the world. Um, so that was really awesome and also an opportunity to get out of America and go somewhere new. So the only thing I would add on this, oh, the only thing I would add on this study abroad side um, is that all of those programs that Riley mentioned are all faculty directed programs where faculty in bioengineering are actually taking students abroad. Um, but also remember there is still the ability to go abroad where the student goes. Um, we had, for example, we had six students in bioengineering that were abroad in three different locations. Um, even this semester, and of course they were all recalled as I'm sure that you've heard, uh, but, but we do have students out there and we are working with different institutions to get programs set up um, where the semesters would actually be fairly equivalent to what we have um, here in bioengineering. And I just mentioned that um, because there are lots of opportunities and for those of you who are on the call that are out of state, um, depending on which program you choose, you would actually pay in-state fees those semesters. Um, and then there are scholarships specifically to, to encourage students to go abroad. Um, so there are lots of options in addition to these faculty directed programs. Cool. Um, so we're about to wrap up, but the last thing that we like to talk about are just some extra opportunities and extracurriculars because we have thrown a lot of information about bioengineering at y'all and we all have lives outside of bioengineering we promise uh, even though this slide still has bioengineering information on it <laughs> so we do have professional societies um, and student organizations within bioengineering so we have UCBS up there at the top and our professional societies are in the middle the society for biomaterials and the biomedical engineering society um, and we also hold some activities. We try to mix in all that fun stuff, social events, intramural teams. People say we're not very good at intramurals because we're engineers, but I feel like we definitely should prove them wrong. So if you are into playing sports, come to Clemson, play on our team. Um, and then we have professional development activities, but we also host things like tailgates sometimes where we just get together on game day and eat food together and listen to music and have fun. Um, but like Riley and I mentioned sort of along the way throughout, we were involved in a bunch of different things, some things study abroads and, and research, bioengineering related, but we both like to go do things outside of bioengineering and engineering. We have students in engineering that are on sports teams, even football players every now and again, we hear about our bioengineers and you'll see them in class, which is exciting. Um, I was on a dance team. We have cheerleaders, we have band members, kind of anything and everything. So if there's something else that you like to be involved in, then keep doing it. We have like 300 and something, maybe even more clubs here. So if, if you can't find something, then you're not looking hard enough, but uh, you can also create a club. So if you and five other friends have the same interest and an advisor who will help you out, then you can create your own club. So we have people that fight with lightsabers underneath our library bridge. If you're into that, then join that club. If you are into eating heads of lettuce, there's a lettuce eating club. So really, there's something for everyone. <laughs> we also have normal clubs. <laughs> we also have normal clubs that are. <laughs> those are just, I like, those are fun to mention. I feel like. Those are fun. You know, chocolate milk drink club. Um, but wrapping up, we have. Let me see if my PowerPoint. There we go. Um, this is our departmental contact information. So Miss Putman was the one that kind of jumped in and out. 
And yep, she's waving. <laughs> Dr. Ken Webb, some of you were emailing um, and we added you to our list through him. So you might already be familiar with Dr. Webb. Uh, Tammy Rethel also helps out in our department and used to have kind of advising duties and things like that. So she's also a great resource. And then these are all of our student ambassadors. So once again, I'm Cassidy and Riley is our other wonderful presenter over there. <laughs> uh, but any of these students will be great at answering any of your questions. So feel free to take a snapshot or a screenshot of this. And then with that being said, we've got 20-ish minutes left in our time block for our video meeting. So I'm gonna do my best to sh stop sharing the slides and then we'll kind of utilize that chat feature to answer any of your additional questions. Cassidy, so, Rachel, Rachel just asked you what dance team you were involved with. She wants what? She <laughs> asked what dance team you were oh. involved with. I know you um, about dance. Yes, um, so we have a couple different dance teams at Clemson, but the one that probably most people know about is Rally Cats. Those are the dancers that are on the sidelines for most of the football games and the basketball games, and they also compete, but I was a tiger dancer, so I was on the marching band's dance team, so I was there for pep rallies, parades, um, halftime performances, pregame performances. If the band was on the field, I was probably out there. So that was mine. I really enjoyed it. It was fun. I think we got a lot of the questions answered already on the side, but if anybody wants to elaborate or has more questions about something that you typed that we tried to answer, just let us know that as well. And we're also planning, if there's a question that you don't want to ask here, um, then we're planning to send out like a little Google form or if you think of something later, so you can send in questions after we log off here and then we'll try to answer all of those in sort of a frequently asked questions document and then resend that out or post it somewhere. So we'll try to get everything answered in some form. So the, when do you choose a concentration? You would actually choose that when you declare. So I don't think we started with the overall. So in the normal tours, you actually hear the general engineering department speak um, about kind of that first year here at Clemson, um, which you'll all be in the same program uh, called general engineering. And then from there you divvy out uh, into the engineering majors based on which one you choose and want to. And there'll be a variety of ways you can choose that. Um, but that was the one you also change um, when you change from bioengineering or from general engineering into bioengineering, you'll declare your concentration at that point in time. I think next up maybe a Riley question. <laughs> Oh, well, I was going to hit the one from Megan really quick, the concentration tissue engineering. No, that would be um, biomaterials. Tissue engineering would fall kind of into that. But we have a lot of professors that work on specifically tissue engineering. So if you're really interested in that, super easy to get involved in like research and kind of take a lot of classes in tissue engineering. We have a lot of really good labs, but the tissue engineering would fall into the biomaterials um, concentration. And then there was the one that said, can you speak about, yeah, about being in the honors college? So I started off in honors at Clemson and that was just like when I applied to Clemson in general I wanted to be in the honors college and so I did the general one I took like my engineering classes as honors level which just meant I could register for a specific section of like engineering 1020 which was honors only so it was only honors kids in that class um, we did with like a couple extra projects or something on top of the normal curriculum um, that kind of differentiated us as honors. I did honors calculus, um, honors psychology. The way that general honors works is you have to take an honors class in like three different groups. And so you'd have to take it in like um, a social science, you'll have to take it in like a math and then like one other thing. And so I just took honors classes in those different groups. Um, the honors was kind of cool too because they offered honor specific classes, like seminar classes. So I took like an English class that was like building imaginary worlds. And so we like read a whole bunch of books that were like imaginary worlds essentially and like how authors would come up with those and like what goes into designing an imaginary world. And that counted as like an English class for me. Um, so that was really cool, but that was an honors only specific course that like if you're in the honors college you could take, but other people couldn't. Um, I was gonna say, I took some seminar courses as well, but I took some possibly strange if you want to call them that, uh, courses. I took an opera class, but not singing opera. It was watching and analyzing operas, and almost none of them were in English, which I feel like most people would expect, but I wasn't <laughs> expecting, so that was interesting for me. And then I also took a course called Cults, Conspiracies, and Secret Societies, so that was kind of wild, but it was cool to hear about 
the different things that people believe and all of the things that have kind of come and gone throughout history. So um, another perk of the honors <laughs> college is you get to register like a little bit earlier than yeah. other students. Um, so that's kind of like something that's drawing for people to be in the honors college. Um, it's a little bit different than departmental honors. Departmental honors is going to be specific to your major and that's going to be something that you would decide kind of like what you're going to come in um, for a while if you want to pursue like a departmental honors. You can also do both. Some people do both, um, general and departmental. Just kind of whatever you want to do. Yeah, that's um, um, One of them is what kind of living learning communities are available. I believe we have several. I don't know all of them, but one of the ones that we kind of emphasize usually and that people ask about because they might have already heard about it is RISE. So that's Residence in Science and Engineering. So if you are a STEM major, you can choose or try to be in the RISE housing area um, where you can also register for specific classes coded for RISE students. So not only are you living in the same building as a lot of your friends, um, that's freshman year. So you'll be taking your engineering and your chemistry and your calculus classes with the same people that you essentially live with. Uh, so you see them all the time. It's a great way to make friends and make those connections. But it's also really nice that the people right next to you when you get back to your dorm at the end of the day are working on the same types of homework. So if you need help, if you need to find a study group, that's a great way to do it. And sometimes your classes are even in the building that you live in. So you can roll out of bed and go downstairs to your classroom and then head right back up um, or wherever you need to be afterward. So it's a great way, again, to make connections, but we also have people ask us about honors housing and whether it's a better option to do RISE or honors. It's really a personal preference. Um, a lot of honors students are also engineers. So if you're afraid that you won't meet a lot of engineers and have that same community homework study session vibe in honors, you will. Um, I lived in honors housing my freshman year and I definitely knew a lot of engineers on my floor and others in my building. So I was able to kind of create those connections either way. Uh, so that's the one that, is more like STEM related that a lot of people ask about. Um, <clears throat> the other question was both of you are from out of state so what drew you to Clemson? Um, for me I was kind of looking at schools that were out of state. I like wanted to kind of get out of Tennessee and like do something new and something kind of on my own um, and I knew that Clemson had a really good engineering program. For me honestly when I visited Clemson and I like got to like walk around campus and I got to interact with students I absolutely fell in love with the feeling of Clemson and I knew that they had a really good program and so I was sold from my like initial interaction just with people that's kind of what drew me to Clemson in general it was like the feeling and it's like it's just like hard to describe it. it's just like this like feeling of like comfort and like happiness like when I walked on campus and my mom had the same feeling which I think helped me a lot too because like I'm best friends with my mom and she was very much like I want to make sure that you're happy and you feel comfortable and she was like I love Clemson it feels like home it's great <laughs> this is where you're going um so for me it was it was like the community and the feeling of Clemson um that drew me here for me it was essentially the same thing Clemson just seemed like the whole package sort of a cliche phrase <laughs> um but my whole family actually went to the University of South Florida so growing up that's that was my whole plan it's 20 minutes from my house right here and my when I say whole family, like mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, everyone. <laughs> um, and then I was looking at some other schools just to check them out. And growing up, my family had visited other family members and vacationed in the Carolinas, North Georgia area. So I knew I loved the area. And someone said, why don't you just look into Clemson? So I took a tour. And before I even stepped on campus, I met some people that went to Clemson, juniors, seniors, that kind of thing, and they were so friendly, and they didn't know me. I wasn't even a student. I was just looking at the school, and they were telling me about where to go the next day so that I could get to my tour on time and how it was going to work, and the people themselves just kind of made it for me. The campus is beautiful. The program is great, uh, but the feel of it at the end of the day is really kind of what, what sells you. They were just so friendly, and I was like, this is, this is it. This feels like home. <laughs> So ironically, I actually came down for school and went through civil engineering here, but I came from Massachusetts and I still have not left yet. So <laughs> there you go. There just is something in these hills, as they say.
um, but it is a special place. Uh, there was a question about the difference between um, general honors and departmental honors. Uh, they're both through the Calhoun Honors College, um, but generally uh, for general honors, you get accepted that into that coming into your freshman year. There are other ways to get into general honors um, coming in your first year, uh, but generally that's how most people get into general honors, and there are different areas in which you have to take honors classes to qualify for general honors. So, um, for example, there could be um, a, a group that has to do with arts and humanities, social sciences. There's an engineering group, um, or maybe it's called a science group instead of engineering, because it is general for the whole university. Um, and then departmental honors is very specific to each of the departments. Um, we actually in bioengineering do have students from other departments uh, like biochem and genetics who will do departmental honors in our major. Um, but Typically, students do stay in their major to do those mini theses to get departmental honors. Um, so you could graduate with general honors and departmental honors. You could graduate with just general honors, and you could graduate with just departmental honors. Um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit more um, information about honors in general. Cool. Um, I think there was a question about uh, how is our free time compared to other majors, and do we feel like we have more work? I think that that is sort of all in how you balance work and all of the extracurriculars or not that you choose to pursue. Um, I feel like sometimes people hope that we're gonna be like, oh, it's a cakewalk. Engineering is tough. If we're honest, it's a tough major, but I think if you think about what you're gearing toward at the end of the day and those jobs that you might um, have and, and the experiences that you get to create and the difference that you get to make, it's all that work is all worth it. Um, sometimes there are going to be days or semesters that are harder to handle than others, but I am also a big proponent of that kind of extracurricular balance and that breathing moment. For me, that was dance. For someone else, it might be music or just hanging out with friends. I say that that's, if you have something extra like that, it's almost easier because then you can refocus when you come back from that and that's really your time to breathe. Um, I never felt like it was a terrible time to be in school because I loved what I was doing. Um, so I think that that also makes a difference and Riley might have other points to make. <laughs> yeah, I definitely think that engineering does a really good job of teaching you time management. It's definitely a very good skill that you learn um, just because you figure out how to balance your coursework with other things, whether that be like an extracurricular or that be dance or that just be hanging out with friends like Cassidy was saying. Um, you get really good at figuring out, okay, well, I know I need to prioritize this, or I can prioritize this, or this is more important, um, this is due earlier, like, you get very, very good soft skills with, like, time management, and how to, sometimes how to say no to things if your plate is too full, that is something that college has definitely taught me, I am, like, a yes, yes, yes kind of person, <laughs> and I realized that I was saying yes to a lot of things, um, so some of the soft skills that at least engineering has taught me is, like, like, how do you balance everything, and how do you manage it, that being said, I still have free time, um, I still hang out with my friends. I still go and play sports and go play basketball or whatever, um, have game night, stuff like that. Bingo! So it's <laughs> bingo! We're actually having domino game night tonight. Um, so it's definitely just like how you prioritize your time, but definitely engineering and bioengineering in general, like Cassie was saying, it's not a cakewalk, but you, you definitely get very, very good at those, building those soft skills um, of like dealing, communicating, time management, stuff like that, which is also extremely important. Um, on top of learning the material. I feel like all of the questions that I've seen recently, we've kind of touched upon. Although, uh, Chris Border did link the Zoom for the RISE session. So if y'all are interested in tuning into another live feed on March 31st at 7 p.m., the RISE Living Learning Community will be hosting something and talking about their housing situation and their program and everything like that. So tune into that. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> You're like smiling when you're eating these. You're like, ah. I know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> no more questions? Wow. Well, I guess I'll stay on for a couple more minutes, Riley, if you want to hang out, feel free. Um, but thank you, everyone that's kind of tuning off now and done with their questions for joining us. And feel free to email us and look out for that link uh, to the question box if you think of anything else as well. So. We hope you liked it. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Let's see.
There was one more question about the type of setting that Clemson's campus is, which is a really great question. Um, and uh, so uh, Clemson is definitely not a city. Um, we do have, we're about two hours, uh, we're about two hours south of Charlotte, two hours north of Atlanta, and two hours um, west of Columbia, kind of in that upper west corner of the state. Um, but there's mountains, there's a lake right here, there's lots of things to do, but it is definitely not a huge city. Um, uh, but there's plenty to do and it, um, quite a lovely place actually, if you ask me, if somebody else wants to kind of chime in and, and be a little more articulate with that, that could be helpful. I love where Clemson is because it is within striking distance of small cities like Greenville, big cities like Atlanta, Asheville's really cool. Um, and then also the Blue Ridge Mountains, because I'm really big into hiking and things like that. So lots of hikes kind of everywhere, mountain views, waterfalls, everything. Um, and then the campus itself is laid out. I think it's a really cool way that they did it. Uh, the center, right where our reflection pond is, if you've ever been to campus, where our library is, that is our center of campus. And then it's almost like a bullseye. And if you take in a general campus tour, they usually describe it this way as well, that the ring on the outside of the pond is all academic. So all of our academic buildings are there. The next ring of the bullseye farther out is housing. So you're headed towards the center of campus when you wake up in the morning and go to your classes and everything should be a little bit closer than all of the other housing buildings were to you. And then farther outside of that are things like parking, sports facilities, um, practice areas for softball, baseball, all that. Kind of stuff. Uh, so everything's sort of like a bullseye in circles. Thank you all so much. Um, we'll make sure that uh, that this is um, distributed if need be, um, but that we're available for questions as well later if you have any more questions.